Welcome to episode 19 of Dial the Gate. My name is David Reed. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're having a great weekend. We just got off uh, with the phone with uh, the video chat with Sue Ann Braun Hathor from Stargate SG-1. And now I have a friend of mine waiting in the wings. You know him as Aiden Ford. You may also know him as Detective Chuck Beeman from Umbrella Academy. It is actor Rainbow Sun Franks waiting in the wings over here. <laughs> I have it. I, I have him in my earphones here. So before we bring Rainbow in, I have something that I would like to ask everyone to do before we get started. If you like Stargate and you want to see more content like this on YouTube, it would mean a great deal. If you click that like button, it really makes a difference with YouTube's algorithm and will definitely help the show grow its audience. Please also consider sharing this video with a Stargate friend. And if you want to get notified about future episodes, click the subscribe icon. Giving the bell icon a click will notify you the moment a new video drops and you'll get my notifications of any last minute guest changes. This is key if you plan on watching live because these talent are working and things are getting crazy. And clips from this live stream will be released over the course of the next several days on both the Dial the Gate and GateWorld.net YouTube channels. Without further ado, let me bring in the man of the hour, Mr. Rainbow Sun Franks. Am I in? You are in. Hi, hi everybody. It's me. I'm Rainbow. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good, brother. How are you? I'm good. Are we streaming this as well? We are. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> That's sweet. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I've got Sorry, 70 I'm, people, uh, 80, 80 concurrent viewers currently in here right I love, now. Wow. Love Say it. Hello to you. So hello. Where are you right now? I'm um you in Vancouver, in my are you in Toronto? In, where are you? In my bedroom in Toronto, okay. Ontario, Canada. You're like a proton. I can never keep an eye on you. It's just like it's oh, true. Well, I've I've found that I I've I found a containment unit for myself <laughs> during this during this pandemic. I'm uh I'm just Staying in these four walls, really, for the next while. Gosh, you managing okay? You're working. I'm working. We're lucky up here in Canada that we've um, managed to get us get it to the point where we can start filming. So I've uh, I've already shot two movies and a TV show and an, a guest on a TV show, and uh, I just started a new Netflix um, animated gig as well. Really? So tell me about the animated gig. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay it wouldn't be love death and robots would it no i wish oh isn't that brilliant no it's a brand new it's, okay. it's a brand new it's a it's a it's a show for kids and stuff i, ju I just signed the paper so no, I absolutely but... no very good well good for you that's 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 but it is fun it, it, it's a it's cool my character is really cool it, it's gonna be a fun project was it strange going back to work um the first time i guess i we i started working in july i think was okay. the first time we, we went back and it was super weird also more just the interactions with everyone um you know on set it's it's such a family and and you become this family as you build and work together over the weeks or months uh or years obviously but yeah even when you start a new project it's like you want to get your relationship started early and like you know getting to know everyone so that you're comfortable working those long hours and with the masks on i i didn't even know what anyone looked like so it's really hard to know who you're meeting all the time when it's just this guy so you, you have to start learning people by how they dress because <laughs> you know and like sort of like their body shape and stuff because i don't really know what they look like and um so that made it really sort of strange um once you, we got over it and got into the work, it was fine. But it's weird. The precautions, there's different hours now. You have uh, uh, wristbands or, like, watches that you wear for, like, proximity. I know Martin Woods, his projects, are they're doing all that. Everyone's yeah, wearing that, wristbands. They're yeah, so the, the different color wristbands. It's like going to the nightclub now. It's like you get VIP and stuff like that. I mean, I don't have it because I'm acting, so they can't put the wristband on. Right, us, that's but. true. Yeah, so, but uh, making yeah. it work. It's it's just weird. There's a lot of precautions. There's testing every you know three days, um, which is great. It's just great. Uh, I'm just happy to be able to work. To be honest, like I didn't work for almost a year, you know, because um, this sort of hit after being off for Christmas, and I yeah. had just shot High Fidelity, and I thought that we were 
like I was just taking a break and getting ready to shoot the next season. And then all of a sudden we got canceled and I was like, Oh great. And then we're in lockdown and then there's just no work. And I'm just like, Oh good. What happens next? Yeah. Eat my fingers and sell everything I own is what happens next. Yeah. Basically trying to survive, you know, but uh, yeah, so I'm really happy that we're back to work. Yeah. You are from Toronto. So you're back in your home city. Yeah. I'm at home. And you are from an acting family. Very much Rest so. in peace, Don. Yeah. Um, who uh, tell us about Young Rainbow Franks? <laughs> and, and, um, and I mean, and Cree, you have an older sister. You know, I do. Who who is also in the in the family profession? Your mom too. My mom uh, is a professional dancer and got into acting as well, and does a lot of theater um, to this day. She still she still does theater, which is amazing. Was it a foregone conclusion that this is what you were going to do with your life? Or um, were they open to you becoming whatever you were going to become? Whatever was going to make um, you happy? So the first job I ever did, uh, I was like three years old. And I had um, I had two lines or two or three lines uh, on this CBC Canadian Broadcasting Company uh, show called Hanging In. And my father got cast and then um, they need, he got cast as a sort of hippie gypsy hippie guy who like travels around and they, uh, they asked him about having a family and he said, well, I'll just bring my freak ass family on. <laughs> and so they hired all of us. So my mom wow. and, and my sister, and we all were in this thing. And that was the first thing I ever said on television. And, and my only line that made it was, and my name's rainbow. And I was like Aww. this big in my mom's arms, which was amazing. Uh, so I was like, my dad made sure that we were at least comfortable and also visiting him on set since I was that big. Uh, it only seemed natural, I think, for my sister and I. She got started early as well. Um, I think she started when she was eight or maybe seven or eight um, doing some films. So it was it was one of those things that we knew exactly what was possible if we wanted it uh, i rebelled several times in my life i um in high school i decided i didn't want to do that uh i was going to play basketball i was going to do all this other stuff and then and then it always came back you know my dad would be like hey there's an audition if you want it you know your agent i know you said you don't want to do this but there's an audition if you want it so around 16 i went back and i did a movie um with a great director named Clement Virgo, uh, a black director from from Toronto, who was always pushing boundaries with his film, and he, he he was an amazing. He still is an amazing man. I haven't talked to him in a minute though. Um, we ended up doing like five movies together, wow. and and that was when I decided, okay, I guess I'm I'm doing this. He hired me and basically put me in every single project of his for the next few years, and uh, and then I was like, okay, I, this is all I'm doing. My dad sat me down one day. He's like, you can do a regular job or you can, you know, come here and do this. And it really wasn't a choice for me. It was like, oh. yeah, I'll do this. Yeah. 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 And But I've been doing this a long fucking time. That's all I know. And, you know, I'm there's still struggling. Well, that, that, <laughs> that's that's a part of the process. I mean, you oh. know, 94 uh, percent uh, I, I think i forget what it was tony amandola told us in a, a few weeks ago you know 94 percent of you are out of work any given week and oh, yeah. so there's a certain rhythm that you have to get into it or you'll just kill yourself you know yeah. one in ten auditions if you get one in ten it's you're doing good you know one in ten is great wow. yeah yeah one in ten is great there was a there was a time when I was I was booking fifty percent for a minute, and my agent called me. He's like, "I don't know what you're doing," but like because they take like stats. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "You're killing the stats right now." <laughs> but then the next, you know, the next six months, it's like you don't even you don't get anything. You know, you it's a weird it up while you can. You know, the, the you have to have such thick skin to do this for a long time because people can do it for a little while. But when it's tough, you know, there's after Stargate, there was a while I, I did another TV show, but there's a while when I just didn't work very much at all. And uh, it was mostly because of myself, because it's also just what you, how you're feeling as well. You know, it's going to affect 
how you do in auditions and all that stuff. So I, I would imagine, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll get into it a little bit, but I would imagine, yeah. I mean, you're, you're promised a promised, you know, a, a yeah. five year contract, oh. you know, oh, right out of the gate. And then, yeah. you know, the, I mean, the whole process of making a television show is so purely subjective and you can't, they're, they're going to take it in whatever way they want. And not everybody gets to stay on that, that boat as it sails from one end to, to the other and there was a lot of yeah. cast rotations in that particular show and in the case of atlantis <laughs> most of us didn't get to stay on the boat yeah or they fell off and then they dragged them back on somehow <laughs> <laughs> you had your cameo too so <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah. thanks to martin garrow that was a that's a great little bit yeah yeah i um, love Garo. Garo's great he's a good guy and what we want to talk about yeah. someone prolific i mean he's just not stopping uh who are yeah. Uh, some of your personal heroes professionally um, but both as just you know as a person someone that you look up to as is just a good honorable human being you know um I mean it's so many of my close friends are my heroes you know um just got like people that I I, I I would say like my friend Toby, you know what I mean? But it doesn't mean anything to anyone here. But I have so many of my close personal friends that I really look up to, like the people in my, my circle is very small. Mm. Um, but those that are in it, I look up to very much. But as far as like growing up and stuff, my father was everything to me. He was really my best friend. He was really um, made up who my sister and I are. Um, creatively and showed us what was possible that you could do anything he really you know it's like you, you always tell kids like you can do anything you can be anything he was do everything and be anything so he really showed he didn't just say it he showed by example that you could do anything you can take up any hobby you want and be almost at a professional level with it. And whatever you do professionally, you do at such a high level that everyone's in awe around you of your energy and the magic that you create. He was such a great singer and performer and just mm -hmm. such a great man and did such insane, you know, he was on the first um, Rainbow Warrior uh, going to save the whales with Greenpeace. Uh, if you look through that book of, of the history of Greenpeace, he's right there, you know? Um, so many he, he helped be the foundation for canadian television a, a, an unsung hero in canadian television because we don't really have a star system here we just sort of do the work and fade away in canada <laughs> unless we make it in america uh he just did such wonderful amazing things and my sister i feel the same way about she's my hero um she's taught me so much about being a good human and a good person and um and creatively, she's just a genius as well. She's unbelievable. Yeah, I have I have so many heroes and sheroes. I just worked with Catherine O'Hara. Uh, she's one, she's one of my Greek. heroes. Yes. She's one of my heroes in life. Oh my god! I have not like, seen the what, show what? yet, but I I'm you, looking you for it. No, it's on my list. I know it's good. So well, I I, I sneak in for like a minute and a half in the last season. Uh, thanks to Dan Levy who who got me in there before it was oh. over, uh, but I got to do my scenes with Catherine O'Hara, and that was just like, oh, like, oh my god. Well, you're my yeah. age. We grew up on you know Home Alone and Beetlejuice, and you know the, the... well, and I and we had, and we had you know SCTV up here, yeah. which which was her and Eugene Levy just like That's going off, right. yeah, and That's John right. Candy, and oh, you know John so Candy. we, yeah, we we were real. I was really lucky that that was just every day on tv you know it's like for anyone watching it's like basically the greatest saturday night live uh or like mad tv or any of the like sketch shows <laughs> but it was every day you know they were so or kids in the hall and I, we also had kids, kids in the, in hall, the hall yeah man yeah i have so many heroes michael jordan's my hero <laughs> mike tyson's my hero man um yeah i have so many there's so many people on this earth but i see people when i'm going out to you know when we used to have conventions i'd meet my heroes all the time too 
I'd be in awe of all these people that we'd meet um, all the time and hopefully become friends with some of them. Yeah, I don't know, man. The it's, last it's... time I was with you, uh, we, were, we were sharing a, a small space with David DeLuise. Talk about another oh, tremendous love... powerhouse. Absolutely love that man. Yeah. So much. He He has the ability to make everyone in the room feel calm and loved and special while his brother has the ability to yell and swear at you and still make you and still make you feel loved and special <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh absolutely that's what you got to do to get someone out of you as a director you know yeah and that's yeah. some of the best kinds are the actors directors so yeah have you um have you worked with amanda tapping as a director yet I've not. Okay. I've not. And uh, she has taken a couple off. Of shows. There's been a couple of shows that I've auditioned for that she's. I, I've seen her name attached, but I just didn't get it. Okay. Uh, and I've never called her like, "Hey, man." Uh, uh. Right. Pull the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a matter of time, man. But she's. Oh my. She like. She's always like when I'm getting one sheets. She's always on there. She must be just incredibly busy. I love her so much. She's so lovely. Perfect. Uh, perfectly genuine. You know. There's. There's not. We're, there's not a bit of of fake about her. Yeah. I. I agree completely. I have to say that we are so lucky. For some reason, uh, Stargate as an alumni. We have this really amazing base of actors because everyone there's not one person that i've met that i really haven't gotten on with to be honest like which is like on other shows i can i'm not gonna like every right. other show I've done, yeah I, other than high fidelity was the same way where it's just like everyone just gets along everyone's lovely like everyone's amazing other shows have like horrible stories like people fucking hate each other and we're blessed like every time we go around the world and see each other it's like ah there you are hey, buddy. <laughs> i think that comes from the top i think it's a tone that richard dean anderson and michael greenberg set alongside uh brad wright and rob cooper and michael greenberg in in the beginning and then season eight of sg1 season one of atlantis when you came along that was the standard just no bs you know we're gonna come we're gonna do the work and we're gonna have fun and if you don't want to have fun this is not the place for you. Yeah. 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 I'll take that. Some of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Stargate. Did you see the the feature film in the theaters? Uh, You're a bit of a sci-fi fan. Definitely a gamer. Uh, I'm more I'm more than a bit of a sci-fi fan. Hold on just a second. I, I, I can't breathe just a second. Sure. I'm going to mute you while I blow my nose like an asshole. <laughs> okay. And we're going to go over here. And you're going to get to stare at my lovely face while Rainbow blows his nose so that he can breathe. So look at these, uh, this lovely menagerie back here. This, this Stargate art you will be able to uh, oh, partake boy. in. Oh, you're, boy. You're, you're my guy. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. The what? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I didn't see the film in – did I see it in theaters or did I see it on – I wasn't there. I, re I recognize – I reckon I saw it on uh, on VHS. Oh, okay. Yeah, I because I I didn't when I was young. I'm starting like I'm like I didn't go to the theater as much as I saw. Like I remember I saw you know I saw Return of the Jedi, but I was oh. like, little, but I was like I was like this we bit this bit. Yeah. Yeah, but like that was uh, the the Star the Star Wars trilogy, the first trilogy was like that's our Christmas movie in my family. Like that's what we would watch uh, over Christmas together. Like my father and my sister. My mom didn't care for it, but <laughs> my father and my sister we we that was what we would do all the time. Um, so I don't think I saw the original in theaters. I think I saw it on VHS. Was the series but already I, going at that point, or no, 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 no? no okay, no. this is before that. Yeah, this is before the television show. Yeah. And um, SG-1, did you follow it all when it was first airing? SG-1 I knew of, but okay. I didn't watch it. Um, I had only seen maybe a few episodes mm -hmm. here and there. Um, in Canada, it wasn't. I, I didn't know where to watch it. It was kind of weird. In America, it would have been easier for me. Um, 
so when I got to set, I remember saying, Hey, I know this much. And I said, Hey Brad, can, uh, can I borrow some tapes? And he just went like, Hey, get rainbow a set of tapes. And then the next thing I knew, I had all the seasons on DVD. So that's what I would do. <laughs> that's what I would do in my trailer, uh, in between shooting when, when, you know, when oh, it was hurry up, up. hurry up and wait time. Yeah. I was watching SG one, uh, the whole time we were shooting first season. Why do you think um, the franchise is so evergreen? What what keeps people coming back to it generation after generation? You've you've now had a chance to meet a couple yourself, you know the same yeah. the same people who, and 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 new audiences who are now discovering it on or new members of the audience who are now discovering it on streaming. What the hell yeah. is going on? Something's happening. I. I think Stargate has that really delicate balance of adventure, life lessons, and fun. There's comedy. There's, it really has that really lovely balance where it's a sci-fi show that gives you everything. You're not watching it and you, when you sit down, you're like, oh, all right, I got to watch this show, which is right. what I do for some shows. You're like, I got to prepare yeah. to watch uh -huh. this show. The mindset. You're you're like, no, I can just sit down. I can drop in. I love all these characters. It's still going to be engaging, but it's not overly anything. It's just sort of wonderfully round. You know, it's a really yeah. rounded sort of show. And that's, uh, I think that's what endears it to the audiences. Um, yeah, I think I think it's just really a well-balanced show. For And as far as sci-fi goes, it's just like there's something for everyone in there. Absolutely. It yeah. just... Um... And I was talking with Su Sue Ann Braun earlier. It's like, in some respects, it's more relevant now than it was, depending on whatever subject matter the episode deals with. So, And that's kind of spooky what when you go you along. Into, what got you into Stargate? Uh, Rick. Richard Dean Anderson, I think, really was the hook for me. because I, You were such a MacGyver fan? No, not at all. I never. I, I mean, I knew who he was. You know, and I had, he had just come off of a TV miniseries um, called Pandora's Clock that had just come out before SG-1 had gone into syndication. That. It's good. I, I can get it to you if you want it. Um, yeah. And it's a, it's a, there's a virus on board a plane, and they have to land in Iceland, and people are freaking – it actually, <laughs> it's eerily familiar to what's going on right, right I now. I think I'm good on viruses. Right now. Don't send it to <laughs> Okay, when we're out of I'm this, right I'll now. send it to you. But uh, <laughs> uh, his energy and his humor uh, kept me coming back – for more because I never knew what I was going to get with him. And then his polite sarcasm is right. so endearing. It's, it's so just, endearing. You never know what he's going to throw at you. And then a few episodes in, uh, when like Rob Cooper's episode, the torment of Tantalus came out, they started growing the show's mythology. And so it was really Rick and the mythology that got me into it, where it was like the show is going somewhere and I don't know where it's going, but it's going to be interesting. And I think that's I what totally really did forgot. it for me. I think you 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 just hit something. The mythology is definitely something that makes Stargate special, also because there is some uh, root in Earth in true like human Earth history as well that we learn, and that's endearing. It's something that we're like can attach ourselves to quickly. We're like, I know these. And yeah, it makes you want to go and educate yourself more because all they've done yeah. is adapted content. So if you want yeah. to know more about you know Earth history or yeah. mythos, you know that information's there to to the people yeah. who are curious about it. Yeah, I love that. I love that. What was it like watching this thing called Atlantis get built from the ground up? You know that that first time that you all met one another, the round table. I'm going to show you something. This is really funny. Okay. So uh, before we, to everyone watching, before we started, I had David on uh, and we were chatting for a minute. And uh, I showed him my apartment, which I won't show you because you're just not privy to that information. But uh, I showed David my apartment, which is currently filled almost to the ceiling <laughs> with boxes of stuff that has just been delivered to me from vancouver that i've had sitting in storage since i left vancouver so it's been there since atlanta a lot of that stuff is is all since uh atlanta oh, four. yeah and i left i think i left in uh 2009 or 2010 to come back to toronto for a bit and to go to la so i opened this box <clears throat> pardon me 
I opened this box and and it was just perfect timing because I, I was I was exhausted on the couch and I, I knew that we were going to do this. And I, I opened this box and I went and I just saw Ramos Sun Franks and then I saw Lieutenant Ford on this binder. And then I keep looking and hold on. Yeah. I keep, oh, it's over there. I keep looking through this box and I see all these binders and they all have my name. And I remember that I used to keep all of my scripts and binders, but I did find this. It's going to, it's probably going to be reversed because of the cam, but. Um, no, that's correct. So <sighs> this is my wow binder that they gave me when i arrived in vancouver so on this first page it says hello and welcome to vancouver in close you'll find a package of information to help familiarize yourself with the city and this is the stargate atlantis this the original is my, production logo this is the very first package uh that i got um there's all the and it's got all my little it's got tabs and contacts of all the actors it's my my cast the cast list and this is the rising script so the very first uh pilot script and so it's really cool and it's like perfect because it's been in this binder did so you notate really cool while you went along were you someone who notated your scripts oh yeah yeah oh yeah 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 i i yeah i'm hold on oh uh, <laughs> okay. yeah i'm pretty crazy um so so I kept going deeper and then yeah. I just found that I have all of I have all my scripts from season one. I literally have yeah, they're all marked up <laughs> crap and, and destroyed. But um I know that people like these things, so I'm not gonna keep them. So I guess maybe I'll find a way to get everyone to sign them and see if I can uh get rid of them for charity or something absolutely yeah i would i would yeah be, be I'm very strategic the, I'm keep, about that i would keep well, I'm that gonna, i'm gonna keep this one because i just want one I, i'm gonna i'm gonna keep the the rising script with the uh with the vancouver package yeah and all these notes of like how to get to the uh <laughs> to this to the studio like from my house that production hand wrote me so i i would know how to get there had like you driving. lived in vancouver before no, I oh, and the fo the first photo gallery shoot. Oh man, let's see them. Oh no, no, it's oh. just a page. It's just I haven't looked through these. It's just like so. Yeah, it, it's it's nothing. It's just all the like the schedule sheets. Oh, and stuff. got it. Okay, for it's promotional. Just like I just I'm just flooded with memories of like being a 24 year old. Oh man, it's me talking, me writing notes about all the weapons that Ford carries. Tactical switchblade. Yeah, because he was going to be the weapons the weapons expert on the yeah. show. Yeah, that was yeah, that was or originally. I mean, he was, but they didn't really uh, enhance that aspect of it. Yeah, they didn't enhance many aspects until they until uh, they were kicking me out. Well, I mean, <laughs> and then they're like, "Give him acting stuff now. <laughs> it's on the way out. Let him act." It's it's difficult because you know you've got. You got to show every every show, even if it's a spinoff, is trying to figure out what it is. Oh yeah, you know, and this, the, some pieces rise and some pieces don't get to rise, and it's just so yeah. frustrating. Because you were my favorite in season one, I think I told you that years ago, and it's just Aww. like you know, and it can't. The information comes out that he's not returning, and it's like, come on, come on, you know. Yeah. But take me back to Rising before we get there. Um, yeah. You know the. Okay, so you're you a new about, city. Yeah. About yeah. day one. Um, well, uh, you know, you know that I also had to leave to go there. I got the job and was shooting the pilot within forty-eight hours. I think so. Yeah. I so they 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 hired me. I don't know, like a a week before shooting, and then they um, they flew me out. Yeah, basically, like on two days' notice, and then I was in van. I had no idea what was going on in life. <laughs> I've said this several times, but um, pardon me. There's a point in the pilot episode rising where I would be able to go there and you'll just, it, it's the first shot that we, I can tell you, I know I'm just by my face. 
I know that that's the first thing we ever shot because I, I just rode there with Robert Patrick, who's like one of my favorite guys. And he was asking me to play him rap music for the whole month he, that we shot. He asked me to play him like obscure rap music in the morning. We used to ride together. Uh-huh. And uh, that was the weirdest thing in my life. <laughs> and I loved every minute. He's so funny, by the way. He's so funny. Um, so I'm meeting the T2000 every morning, which is just... 1, what, oh, is he the 1,000? 1,000. Oh, my God. There's no the, T2000 yet. The the gall, the, the disrespect. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to get 400, you on the straight messages, narrow, brother. 400 messages from Terminator fans like, <laughs> it's a T1000! <laughs> um, Actually, Rainbow. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. There is no T2000, you stupid actor. Um, <laughs> did you even watch the movie? So... Yeah, there's a point in the. Sorry, I'm a, I'm insane today. Good. I, I I was on night shoots. I haven't slept at all. <laughs> um, so there's a point I can I can literally pinpoint. I can I can put my finger and say like, this is where I have no idea what's going on. It's me and Rachel, and and I, there's like this sweeping shot. And if you look at me, I just look like I'm a deer in headlights because I had literally just gotten there. Like a few hours before I had gotten off a plane. Is that like in the so tent there. on Athos? And I'm like 23 years old. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. what is happening? Like I've been on TV my whole life, but it was still like, I was on Stargate. Uh, I, I was so excited. You have, you, you have to understand that like for me to be a 23 year old kid and be on a sci-fi show and be able to play in space, it was everything to me. I, I was so happy. And so you ask about like the feelings of first meeting each other and stuff. It was incredible. Rachel and I got along really well immediately. And, um, and, and Joe and I got along really well um, from the start who I absolutely love more and more each day. Uh, Joe Flanagan. I, I am just, yeah, I love that dude. There's something about <laughs> him. He's, he's soulful. You know, I've yeah, I've just I feel like I've watched us both grow as mm-hmm. humans, as people, you mm-hmm. know, and I'm, I'm really I, I love where he's at right now. Mm-hmm. I just love it. I love where he's at. Absolutely. Yeah. How a special. Group. How was Hewlett? <laughs> Hewlett is great. <laughs> when. When Hewlett's in a good mood, he's great. <laughs> That's what I. That's you fair. know. Yeah, you can't when keep Hewlett... the energy up the entire time. Sixteen hours every day I, on I set. Will... You know. Here's what I'll say: as as a kid, I didn't realize the um, the weight that Hewlett had as an actor on him on that show. You mean like with the dialogue? Um, yeah, with the dialogue it's a pain in the ass. and 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 the pa- and the power of exposition. It wasn't until so I I had to I did a show for four years or five years called The Listener here in Canada, yes. um, which I started as soon as I got back from Vancouver in 2010. And I played a character named Dev Clark, who yes. is um, the technical. Uh, he's the computer guy. He's the. Oh, she was so on I the was, other foot. Yeah, so I was in charge of you know tech talk and exposition for for four years and that's when i realized um the difficulty of what david had to do it's really really difficult and it's a completely different skill set uh that i had to develop that he had uh, uh, overflowing david really has a knack for that and i studied him when i got into it because it's not just about talking fast you know pace is a lot of it but there's so much more to it you have to find something in a weird way that endears what you're saying to like makes it interesting for the audience it's 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 really weird skill set to be the exposition guy because you're just pushing the story so many so much of the time you you are but the words can't just come out and at a certain no, you pace to, and in the right order. They have to mean to something to you to mean something to the audience. Passionate about nothing. And, right? Because most of the stuff everyone around you already knows that you're saying. 
<laughs> like right. all the characters already you're just they could easily look at you and be like yeah i know dude we've been doing this the whole time together you know like why are you saying that but it's <laughs> for the audience <laughs> there's a fourth wall that's yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um yeah i yeah hewlett is a master at what he does and he's 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 great and when he's happy he's a lovely guy to be around <laughs> you have no, i love you um, i take the pin you got to work with some uh, awesome actors over the over the course of of your time there, and some really cool stunts. Uh, James Bamford, yeah. you know, you had a fight Bam sequence Bam. with Bam Bam. What a god among men! That guy can do. He is game for anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As long as I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's incredible. I mean, I'm. I love Bam Bam. Working with him was great. Um, yeah, some of those fight scenes, you know, we we were um, we were the first ones to do a flying armbar on on uh, TV. Uh, so can you translate that? I think for that was in. I think that was the in layman? Brotherhood. I think that was in the Brotherhood episode. Um, it's uh, basically um, an MMA move where you jump up, wrap your leg while in the air wrap your leg around his neck and other arm and then while you're wrapping your arm around this one and then they you can basically snap their arm while they're standing up before they drop or or use it to drop them and then snap their arm once they're dropped and you must make yeah. you feel like a badass um yeah it was funny um i think it was was it paul that i did it on i think it was paul lazenby um who's like this a great actor in Vancouver and, but he's, uh, he's massive. He's probably, he, he, and he, now he's slimmed down, but he's like, you know, six, whatever. And probably got a hundred pounds on me at the time. <laughs> and so he, it was funny to have me jump up there on him and he just sort of held me. He, he could hold me there if he wanted to normally <laughs> in place. You're, you're meant to like drop someone. <laughs> And he's just like, all right, you want you ready? All right. And then he fell. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to do it, the technical move, so the camera caught it. But I was so great to be able to do all my own stunts on that show. Um, you know, 90, more than 90% of everything that you see Ford doing is me. Uh, the only time it's not me is when stuff was exploding in my face. Mm. Um, and there was a bit of one fight sequence where we, uh, Jason and I got, so muddy and exhausted that they brought in our doubles to finish it up because it was in the rain at that, one point. That episode, but, but that's that's a runner. Yes, Run which is my favorite episode in Atlantis. It's a good, it's a good show, you know, for all kinds of reasons. It um, go ahead. No, I. You look like you had something really, on the tip of your tongue. Oh, um, I just think I I thought run, the the reason I really love Runner is I think it's a really well paced episode and it's it's got uh the cinematics in it are completely different from any other episode it looks different uh you also get introduced to ronan which is a pretty monumental uh moment in uh in the atlantis story um and it's sort of the transferring of me and him which was really cool and you get to see me fight Jason Momoa, which is uh, pretty cool. I mean, he was a lot smaller then also. So yeah, he's, more... he's a very different guy physically he's massive now. now. He, um, yeah. we, we went up, uh, Darren and I went up when we were shooting. Uh, when they were, I can't remember what you guys were filming, but uh, Bam Bam took us aside and said, check this out. Check this. And he, we went into our, he was so excited. And he went into yeah. a, he took us into a room and everything was on DV tapes back then. So he just loaded it onto his laptop and he yeah. had choreographed the, the draft of, of, of all of the behind the scenes fighting that you guys did in practice so that he could oh, then yeah. turn it over to the team so that you guys could execute it again on set. But he, he would always like, he was like oh, his he, own director in his shoot. own right. He would shoot. Well, that was when he was starting to, because he was he was a great fight choreographer then, right? And and stuntman, but he was starting to. I remember that because he shot. He did his own DV cameras the, of everything. Yeah, he would shoot the fights like our practice runs, and then cut and actually cut it together so he could 
also so he could show the the production team exactly and say like what it this was is what was... i think it, right this is what i'm thinking yeah how long yeah. would it take i mean that that's a big fight that's probably atlantis's that long. first real like real like fight sequence how long did that take to rehearse and execute so the note from the top for that fight I, it was really funny because we went i remember going into the office after work one day and um they said uh, me and jason were there and they said what well, they want to make this fight like a jason Bourne fight they said that you know it's rare like we haven't had two guys like you on this show mm -hmm. that are that can go at it so mm -hmm. and 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 bam bam was like yeah let's let's do what we can because we got two athletes that can go at it yeah and in the story um, ford's drugged up to the gills at this point oh yeah and yeah and then you've got a runner who's you know just by design just a machine so yeah yeah they grossly inflated his power i would say to <laughs> Ford Ford should have been able to wipe wipe <laughs> snap <him out>. his <laughs> neck. <laughs> yeah, Ford really should have been able to just destroy him. Uh, but that's cool. They were introducing a new power right. character had to make him super powerful. Um, there's another point in one of the episodes where we get hit with stunners, and I go down before him, and I was like, also that wouldn't happen if I was on on Wraith yeah. Enzyme. Have you seen the last episode? They just no. really like to inflate Ronan's power. I was like. On set, I was like, there's no way this would happen in there. Like, just go with it. I was like, all right, okay. Cool, yeah. okay. You guys are... <laughs> but, um, yeah, Runner was such a great episode. I love that episode so much. Yeah, sorry. No, you're all right. Um, cool. You came back for The Lost Boys and The Hive. Lost Boys, those are good episodes, too. I really love those episodes, too. They're oh, solid. you're making me want to watch Stargate. I haven't seen it in so long. You know, you really should. It's kind of a good show. So, yeah <laughs> uh what what was it like feeling that character out as basically a whole new creature a whole new person you know did you have how did how did you reinterpret him you know who had lost someone who had lost his family someone who for better or for worse believed that you know well he that didn't they had really abandoned him raised by his grandparents too that's so true he... i mean the atlantis family the well, yeah, I was going to say, he lost his family, yeah. and then he also lost his second family as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. You know, now he's he wandering like... around Pegasus, building this yeah. this almost cult of boys together who yeah. are just going after the Wraith. Um, yeah. Tell us about that new journey. Uh, it, it was interesting to finally be given some meat and be able to do what I do. And I remember I was very excited about it. And I was also very sad about, at the time, um, not, you know, knowing that, that these were my last episodes. Um, I was very sad. I really got very depressed at the end of uh, Stargate. It was, it was rough on me because I really thought that I was going to be there for a while. Yeah. That's what I was told. Yeah. And, um, and then, also it was just like such a great big job and it was i moved out on my own you know it was like it was it was a whole lifestyle switch for me and everything was amazing and then it was just taken away from me so i used a lot of that for ford uh i used a lot of that feeling of loss that that was easily relatable to the job because it was from in the job that i was doing yeah um uh paul mcgillian who's who's my dear brother who i i love so yeah. very much um <laughs> um him i he and i and, and rachel were very inseparable offset we hung out all the time we really loved to to be together and paul and i have always been extremely close and paul is such a good actor he's great he's a really really balanced and diverse actor he can do anything and i asked paul to help me to work on it's the first time i've ever, i had ever done that but i i had asked i asked paul i said paul can i come over i said i'm, I'm having a hard time uh with my own emotions going back to work on this show uh and he really helped me to like harness 
um, some of the hurt and, and put it into the new Ford um, uh, from sort of from runner on. Mm. Uh, he, he really was there for me and we would go through the script and break it down. And, um, and then he would, he would on the weekend do reads with me and I would just read with him and it was really, really nice. So I, I, I'm really grateful that he gave that young man uh, time to to grow and explore some things because I, I wasn't very like secure at that time i was i was very very sad and i didn't feel um like i knew what i was doing you know it was weird it's 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 one of those difficult situations where you know you can't help but feel like on 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 some level you know, well, if I had only just done this or, you know, or if they had only just given me this, then it would, <laughs> then it would have worked. And programming, this stuff is so subjective. It goes in one direction and doesn't go in another. And, you know, you can't help as an artist, I'm sure, but take so much of that onto yourself for better or for worse. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you immediately do. I mean, I, I you know, you can't, Especially I wasn't given a reason I, to this day. I have no idea why, you know, um, so that's hard. And then you overthink things and you make up your own reasons and it's usually blaming yourself for something, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was rough. It was a rough time, but I also wanted to make use of the time that they, they finally did give me a whole bunch. If you look at one of I, I got to say to this day, I really, I, I watched it not too long ago because I was cutting t together a, a demo reel for a project that was requested. Mm -hmm. And I was going through a bunch of the Atlanta stuff because I wanted something yeah. uh, from that show on it. And the opening to Lost Boys me telling the story there's like a really cool stunt I do in it this the stories it's like it's like me talking for like six pages uh and and i you know i dose them they get their first dose in the food of the wraith enzyme and all that stuff welcome to the club that yeah yeah uh, you're what is it you're all oh i forget the exact line too but it's, yeah, you're, you're all you're all you're all part of the team now yeah you're all, you're all part of the team now um and then it goes into another thing where me and Shepard have a little talk in the back room. That was like, all of a sudden they gave me like nothing to say in the first season, other than sort of in the eye in the storm. There was a few episodes where I got to do so. And then they just like dumped, they were like, Oh, here you go. And I was like, Oh, I wish you had just done this before. So I, you know, so it was, it was a weird juxtaposition of like, thank you for, finally giving me something to do and so i can show the fans mm -hmm. why i'm here like mm -hmm. why i was hired but at the same time like see you later <laughs> yeah i'm not being handed a bone i'm being handed a steak this time but i'm on yeah. the outside looking in almost you know that had got yeah. to have been weird so. yeah it was weird yeah but i love that for anyone watching if you yeah i love that opening scene it's a really nice little mm -hmm. ford it's a nice ford moment it's a really really nice Ford book. Rainbow, I have a ton of fan questions to get to. Oh, it's, good. It's kind I would of, love kind of crazy. Um, got I nearly, uh, I've got uh, 150 concurrent viewers right now. So hi, oh, everybody. hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure I've met a whole bunch of you. Absolutely. Let me tell you that I love each and every one of you. So before I get much. to them, fandom, going to conventions, meeting these people. Um, love it. Love it. I love every minute. Of what a re reward! It can't. I mean, it's just to, to know that to know that you've definitively made a positive impact on people's lives. I'm. I go to them, and um, I'll I'll go to them, and I'll you know just go as I go as a fan. Also, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Like there, it, it was funny. There's a there's a big one we have here called Fan Expo in uh -huh. uh, in Toronto. It's massive, and. Uh, Every time I go, I end up doing a signing, but I'm not paid to do a signing. I end up literally sitting there, and it's the best thing in the world. Like, I went to go see Joe when he was there. 
I I love them. I love meeting everyone. I love nerding out with everyone because I don't get to do that um, in my normal life other than with my sister, you know? Um, so I get to be myself and, and be in a group of people that has similar interests, which is so nice to me. Because normally I'm on set or I'm, right. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm You're working. Nerd. Yeah, I'm also, I can't talk my shit. You know what I mean? I just go play my Nintendo Switch in my trailer. And... <laughs> so it's... So it's it's great, you know. I, I yeah, I can't say how much I'm so grateful to have been on a few different sci fi shows now. Um and meeting all the people and getting to to talk about the things that we love is so special to me. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Claire Burr. And it's a weird yeah. thing. It's a weird thing. It's um conventions, the deeper you get into them, you know, there's like there's dances and things and songs and things that only you get you you only get at these conventions it's it's a there's a there's a a cult sort of it is kind of cultish yeah th- there's stuff that i know that my friends don't know even if they've been to conventions does yeah. that make sense like there's levels to it oh like, absolutely there is yeah you, you've got the to to let a little people a little bit of uh, uh, in for some people the um, you've got the the groups that just you know go with their families and they go for autographs and they go to get the stories, yeah. and then you've got you know this whole layer of I know a couple of girls who go you know just to try and get some one on one time with an actor if you know what I'm saying oh, it's just those. like whoa okay now I am not here for that but we yeah. are it's like all right you know to each your own that's fine. <laughs> Because a lot of you guys are single, and you know what? Some things have gone down. So I've seen some things go down. <laughs> oh God! I I've I've never gone down, but yeah, I've seen some things go down. Yeah, I've seen some things go down for sure. For Claire sure. Claire Burr wants to know whose idea was it to have Shepard make fun of Ford about naming things? How did the whole joke of Ford shouldn't be allowed to name things come about. Was that in the script or was that external from that? That's a great question. Uh, there was one, so many of the things just start as, as a one-off. So th- there was the first time I think um, in the pilot. Life science detector. Was it life science detector mm-hmm. first or was it? Okay. Yeah. Atlanta yeah I thought it was later. either life science detector. I thought it was a puddle jumper. Uh, that could have been that actually, you know, it, the life science detector was second. You're right. Yeah. I think it's puddle jumper. So, so we did that. <clears throat> and then from that, we started rolling into, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, this, it's a, this life science. And every time we had to name something, I was present there. So we just started saying the joke over and over again. And eventually they just we'll kept it putting it in the script where I, I never get to name anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. See, that's the one thing that I miss about Ford is those, big brother moments um st- when ford left you don't you don't have those moments anymore you don't have someone who's very proficient in what they do but also wide-eyed wide-eyed and a kid and and just open to everything mm-hmm. you know you, you you lose that whole angle when ford leaves and yeah that, that you lose leaves. the marine angle too you know, every, all the rest of them were yeah. air force so or shepherd yeah. was so there was that yeah. aspect of it you know that i uh, having Marines in my family. I mean, that was a big deal. Yeah. Too. My, my dad was army. So um, Gib, what was the most, um, this is, this is, this could be heavy. Uh, what was the most significant okay. life takeaway from your time with the show? Significant life takeaway. I, mean, I think we've kind of talked about that, you know, with learning I you think, know, to deal with. I think with... I learned, I think I learned a big lesson in the business uh, mm-hmm. on that show. I think I think that was, I think I I got a lot weaker and a lot tougher after that show. Um, it definitely contributed to uh, anxiety and depression afterwards, but it also made me realize that just go do your work and uh you know you'll never know what's going to happen i toughened up a lot i think I, I toughened up a lot after that and um i also wanted to make sure that every time i showed up 
I just went super hard ever since ever since that job i i've just gone at every job i've done with uh with incredible dedication and just been like if these are the only moments that i have then uh i'm not i'm not gonna bank on even even if i'm just a tertiary character that they're not giving a lot i'm gonna give a lot to it you know make it Um, count as as best I can for myself, I mean, I, I don't mean it's not like I I I was trying harder than any course, yeah, in Atlantis, but I it was different in my mindset was slightly different than it is now, yeah, but yeah, I think just toughening up is the the life the takeaway, yeah, yeah. Erica Stroham, you've done a few. Different- oh, Erica, hi, Mama. You know Erica? Yes. All right. Very well. You've I done love her so much. A few different genres in your acting career. Uh, yes. Which genre is a personal favorite to play? Uh, there's so much to be had from each genre of acting that I like. We were talking about exposition and being like the tech guy. That's so fun. But after a few years, it's not fun anymore. Yeah. Um, I would say comedy. I, you know, I, I, I love when I get to play uh, in comedies. It's so much fun. Uh, it's fun exploring what's funny. It's it's fun exploring the moment. Pardon me. Getting to uh, improv, getting to do all that stuff. It's it's great. But there's I, I love everything. I don't know. It's funny. I, like I said, I was cutting a demo reel and I was going through. I I realized like, oh man, I've like I'm amassing a lot of work, and now. <laughs> It's true. I was like, it's like, man, I've actually been working. Um, <laughs> uh, high fidelity was my favorite job yeah. I've done in a long time. And that's that perfect mix of real drama and, and real comedy where it's like realistically funny, you know, um, not like caricatures of any human being. So I, I well, that's grounded, you know, it's I've, very, I've read the synopsis it's before. I think grounded, I'd like, but it's I'd also, like it. yeah. It can also be obscure and sort of over the top, but right. it's still, for some reason, it feels real, you know? Yeah. yeah. And if you haven't watched that, guys, we just got canceled. Another heartbreak. So there's the life lesson. I toughened up. It only took me like a week to get over that one. <laughs> but if it's it's still worth watching. Oh, it yeah. is. It, well, no one knew why it got canceled. It was literally, if you look at the acclaim, it's like Rolling Stone, New York Times, uh, you know, whatever magazines, whatever websites, yeah, all said it's like you know top three, top five best show, new shows, like nothing safe anymore. No, and then they just out of the blue. Jeez, they're just like you're not doing it. I was like, why? Like what? Ah, you never know. Dreams Factory, you were my favorite I character in SGA, and oh. if you could tell us uh, what was uh, one of your favorite scenes to film. Oh, we go ahead. Um, oh man, I know uh, we haven't talked about the storm in the eye that much trapped in a puddle jumper. There's some good scenes in there. Okay. That was me, Paul and Rachel. trapped right. in a puddle jumper. Exactly. We laughed for two days in that little puddle jumper together <laughs> on those seats. Cause we loved each other. But after being in a, uh, something the size of a king size bed, for that long oh man we love oh god no i'm not even going to talk about uh 38 minutes and being it oh with... that's right that's a rough episode that was yeah that was uh no one no one was happy and a no bug on joe's happy. neck nonetheless which i'm sure well, and he, he was and he was tied to yeah. the door so he couldn't move while we were shooting uh so he just had to sit there for hours oh it was the worst and I was sick. Like, I, I feel like I am now. I, I swear I got sick after that night shoot, mm. being out in the cold. It's winter here, so. Yeah. <clears throat> Good old Canadian winter. <laughs> um, so what scene do I like? Okay, this isn't a scene with... Oh, okay, I'll say... There's a couple. Um, there's a scene where Jason and I, where I'm trying to tell him that, like, it's good for him to take this enzyme and he should trust me. Uh, It's one of my favorite scenes because it's literally me and him talking about the last time we fought. And I'm like, I'm like, you ask, you ask a dozen people who would win in a fight between you and me. They choose you hands down. Hell, 
I'd choose you. Oh my God, I can't believe I know this from 15 years ago. How do I choose? Uh, I go, hell, I'd choose you. I go, but we went toe to toe. And he goes, but so I guess it's still undecided. And I go, you'll come around. I know you. You'll come around, Ronan. I know you will. And I just walk off. And it's like one of my favorites. I'm like so G'd out in that scene. I was just like, because <laughs> he's, because it's, I, I just love if you watch it again, it's like he plays it really straight. And I just sort of take, I deflate everything. Because I knew he was going to give me that like, Jason Momoa, Jason Momoa. So I was like, I'm about to just like <laughs> diffuse this whole situation. <laughs> And uh, it's one of my favorite scenes. And it starts with me doing a bunch of little like roles in the stunt thing at the beginning. It's a great little scene. So that one I love. And then the other one I love is, uh, is I think it's the beginning of Runner. And it's, 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 it's the opening scene and you have two of the scientists walking out and it's dark and they're oh, like, look what at are that we plant. looking for? Yeah, oh. what, yeah, yeah, they're looking for plants and um you're in the tree yeah so martin wood directed that episode i believe and i remember us being out and we we're trying to he was trying to figure out how to make this work and they had me being revealed just from like behind a tree or you know what i mean they're like under a log or something and i went and they had the big it was it was on a giant swinging jib arm so i was like I, I I'll take the credit for this, but, but uh, I work I worked with M Martin Wood on it, and I said, "What if I went up there?" And he went, "Yeah, he's oh he's also the best human ever. His energy is so good. He's like, yeah, Rainbow, can you get up there?" And so I shimmied myself like Jackie Chan <laughs> in between these two trees, and I got up. And I just sat there and he's like, how long can you last? And I go, I go, I can, I can do maybe 10 minutes up here. And he goes, we need you up there for longer probably. So they built a little, um, like a, a little, ledge. They, they, they drilled just a little, all I needed was just something for my heel, just like a heel lock. Right. Yeah. So I wasn't putting all the strain on my legs. And, um, so they put like, they drilled in this little thing. It took about four minutes for them to get a ladder and do it. And then that was it. So I just sat up there while they did take after take and they brought the, the jib arm up as they passed by me. And that was one of my other favorite things. Cause I, they, I love that he gave me the input and it really made the, it made the shot. And that was me mm -hmm. really going for it in my last episodes. Like how can I make every moment count? I'm going to be there. I'm going to help any way I can and, uh, and, and use all my efforts. So that's, those are my favorite scenes. I'm the most long winded person in the world. I'm so sorry. Oh, I love it. <laughs> better than, better than abbreviated answers. Absolutely. <laughs> Bethany Jacques. Did you do any, and other than the ones that we've mentioned, did you do any yeah. ad libs in Atlantis? Yeah. Um, but I don't remember. Mm. I don't, I, I mean, my brain is pretty good for scripts, but as far as like the ad lib stuff that made it, um, I know, I know uh, you want to play a game of pick on Ford. There was a couple of times when I, I, I brought, I recalled that and that I know every time after the first time was me doing that. Um, um, all the McKay stuff in, uh, is it in Runner? Yeah, in Runner where he's upside down and I'm laughing at him and saying <laughs> stuff. Right. <laughs> most of that, most of that was just to fill space because he was actually hanging upside down and he was very grumpy that day. <laughs> very grumpy. Hanging upside down, but I understand. <laughs> I, I totally understand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know very many ad libs. Uh, there's a few. They were they were great scripts. They really didn't need much ad libbing, to be honest. Um, it would be very far and few between. It would mostly just be for pacing fixes if we if we did anything like that. Yeah, mm. the scripts were pretty complete. Like they were, the writing was. You know, solid. These guys know what they're doing. They, they know, know what they're doing. Yeah, Mustang Sally. Uh, we already got into this. Uh, you you posted that you found a bunch of pics and scripts from SGA. Do you ever find things laying around that remind you of something from set? And tying into that, David Lindbergh, uh, do you have anything that you were able to take home from the set? David? Oh, that's my brother. Hi, <laughs> I love him. 
What did he say? Did, did anything what? anything that you were able to take home from the set? Didn't you have a jacket? No, all of my stuff got sold, yeah. including my including my chair back. Yeah, that was me. They never I'm sorry, man. they never told me that they were doing it. So I think uh, props works. Yeah, that was. I, I wish I had known. I would have all my stuff. There's some and there's some guy who we we found the guy that has my chair back and he won't sell it to me. He's like, no, I want it. I'm like, can I just have it? <laughs> like, I'll, buy, I'll, I'll pay. You can make a profit. Like I'll buy it. I'll right. double, double your money. Triple your money. We're putting that out there if it. you're watching. So. Yeah, I just want it. It would be nice to have on the wall, you know? Absolutely. Because uh, I got nothing. Jason, I think Jason uh, is known to be the guy that took everything. I think he's got I think he's got a bit of everything, which is awesome. I know he didn't take any of his guns. I sold his guns. So. Oh, really? I thought he took uh, a blaster. Uh, he may have, but he didn't take the main <laughs> one. So, Because the, oh, the full working oh. one, man, was that thing cool. Holy yeah, it was cow. Cool. It was cool. Um, uh, well, uh, but I, oh, I did find, I don't know where they are now or I would bring them out. I did find also some, uh, of the art, art department. I would go to the art department and ask them for things when they were done with them that were on the wall. So I have a bunch of the posters. I know I have McKay's, uh, the turtle, turtle brooch. Yeah. The, the ancient brooch. Yeah. Uh, personal, uh, shield. The force field. Yeah. So I, I have the, all the specs for that from our department. I have a bunch of cool like posters that I'm uh, I'm probably gonna. The art. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep them. I don't know what to do with all this stuff, man. Well, you gotta go through it. Just take your time with it. <laughs> yeah, I think I I think I would rather like if I keep this, mm. I'll, the the rest of the stuff. Oh, I found a gang of Polaroids. I have so many Polaroids. They're all from SG One though. They're all. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, hmm? like I have like continuity, continuity. Polaroids that I think got left in my trailer and I just brought them home and never brought them back. So they're, I think they're from season two or something. It's crazy. Two or three. Blau Fare Cabello. I probably sure. butchered that. Which villain, sure. including the replicators and all of the Stargate franchise, would you avoid the most? Uh, I mean, system Lords probably. <laughs> 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 they seem like the ones I want to avoid. I feel like <laughs> I feel like just the name System Lord seems like someone you don't want to. Yeah, and they yeah. were pretty well dressed. Name, name, I mean, you have your, your own clothing line, so you know maybe they yeah. can wear some of your stuff. Yeah. Oh God. Um, yeah, I think those guys. I mean, the Wraith are scary. The Wraith are no joke. But I kind of they became lunch. So they did. Uh, yeah, yeah. They had a different mindset so. for them. Yeah, yeah, I really did. I really did. Ian, Rainbow, what's your recommended drink? Uh, water. But alcohol? Tequila. I suspect. Oh, tequila, okay. <laughs> yeah, tequila. All day, tequila. Tequila with uh, just fresh lime. Just very sour. Just tequila and lots and lots of lime juice. And it's it's horribly tart and it's amazing I'm, i love <laughs> yeah. i love tart i love tart yeah keith homel out of all the stargate conventions to which you've been do oh you have uh any particular favorite moments that's a broad question um uh <laughs> do i have any particular favorite moments oh boy um oh boy uh doing improv with gary jones is always a lot of fun at at any time or uh um but oh man let's see my favorite moments from conventions uh there was i i was in germany and uh i decided to bring one of my best friends with me arcade who's like my homie since like high school so I was like, "Hey man, what are you doing?" I said they 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 said they'd bring uh, my girlfriend, but I we broke up, so I got this extra ticket. You want to hey, come? There you to, go. <laughs> you want to come to Germany? He's like, "Yeah, dude, let's go." I was like, "You want to spend the week in Germany with me?" He's like, "Yeah, let's go." So we go and do this convention, and oh man, who was there? I'm trying to remember who was there with us at the convention. 
I know it was people from Battlestar were there. Okay. Good um, cast. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember who it was. Grace Park. No. Tom O'Pennicott. No, it was Trisha Helfer. Jamie Bamber. Trisha might have been there. Okay. No, Chase I know Nick. I know. Eddie. No, Nick. Nikki Klein was there. Nikki? And, okay. Uh oh. Aaron Douglas. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> oh yes, it Good was analyst. Douglas. Okay, it, it was, and he was in his heyday of being an animal. It was great, <laughs> and uh, and so th- th- we we couldn't go anywhere, and we were in this in this convention sort of hotel, and that was it. And I was with my boy, and he met some like cute girls in the lobby, and we we're like, "Come to this party," and it was the convention party, and. I got so, like I didn't drink a lot back then, and I got I think I drank like a whole bottle of vodka. Oh, and I drank vodka back then, and I I think I drank a whole bottle of vodka. And the next thing I knew, him and I were both passed out. He puked on the side of the bed. I was asleep on the just on the floor. And the door was wide open the whole night with people walking back and forth that were convention goers. And they just saw us like laid out, which was the greatest thing for stories. The next, <laughs> like God. people were showing me pictures they had taken. Oh. oh, it was great. It was great. I never went to university. So I feel like that was my uh, Your dorm that moment. Was- yeah, I had a little like I had a dorm moment. You know, I kind of got to have that feeling of like being absolutely irresponsible. It was great. It was really great. Yeah. Matthew Hall, we we talked about this a little bit. How demanding or fun was it altering a character personality, altering Ford's uh, personality in a way that was fitting to the story after playing the part for for so long? Just taking yeah. him and basically making him a whole new person. Yeah. Um it was great. I, I think I got to expand on him. I didn't have to make him a whole new person because you hadn't seen enough of him yet. That's true. You hadn't seen his whole personality. So what I got to do was create what you hadn't seen and then make make extremes of all of them. So, you know, when he's happy, he's super duper happy. And then he's not happy again immediately after. So just having that sort of really shifty personality um was was what we were going for so it was more about showing more more of him you know yeah almost bipolar oh very high highs and low lows very very schizophrenic yeah to be honest you know um that's what we are working on is those quick switches and uh hoping that the editor would also help with that um afterwards um as far as not making him look absolutely nuts like if i was doing it at, in different takes doing different things so he wasn't like up down up down up down up I'm like, <laughs> well you know on, <clears throat> at, at the same time <clears throat> he's still a boy you know and well yeah they have and to have that humanity there. for love yeah like, he just wants he want he you know he, he he cared so much about there's a point in in runner when i fought when i first meet mckay and i you know I hold him at gunpoint. I walk him. And then the first thing I'm saying is, so what I miss, like what's going on over there. And he's like, you know, Shepard got an upgrade and I'm like, Oh really? It's like, Oh, good for him. Like, that's crazy. Like I have a gun to my friend's head and I'm just asking him for the gossip. And then I'm also happy about the promote. Like it's super weird. The yeah. More, he's the genuinely more, the happy about the promotion, but at, at the yeah. same time, it, you know, I'm holding this but gun to your head. But he could also kill this guy at any time. He could. Uh-huh. And all he's yeah. thinking is, I just want to prove myself. I want to show yeah. her that I'm okay yeah. as I hold this I gun no, to your head. But I have heavy trust issues, you know? Yeah. 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 David Browning, what was it like working with the great Robert Davi? Oh, I didn't like him at all. I didn't like him at all. He was really... He was very, I mean, I think maybe he was like, uh, he just seemed like a dark dude. I don't know. He's a great actor. I love all of his work. I, he was really dark. Was he just he intense? Yeah. I didn't okay. really like, I didn't really like, I didn't really get to. Yeah. Okay. He, I didn't. Yeah. He was great. Like 
unbelievable. I just, I never got into his personality. I think we had a real uh, difference of opinion on politics at the time. Okay. I think he was a heavy Republican and that was Bush in office. And I really wasn't feeling that at the time. So I think I sort of stayed away. But I, I, I don't disagree with the great Robert Davi at all. He is absolutely just a powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah, he was good. I don't know. I, like I said, I was also just like there. I had to jump on some guy's back during that right. episode and pass out. I was worried about other things. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Barry yeah. Barry, uh, your favorite sci fi show of all time. Let's exclude, let's exclude, um, the, the I mean let's let's just take Stargate out of contention you know because you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's uh, outside uh, of outside of Stargate what's your favorite sci-fi show uh well fuck man the Mandalorian right now is just like everything it is like thank John Favreau yeah for Dave all Filoni like, I haven't oh seen season God. two yet. Um, oh, everyone's ra- I've, I've watched season one. I, everyone's raving about it. So, oh, the last like the last episode was so good. Um, <laughs> I'll oh. watch them when they're all done. My favorite sci-fi show, uh, Rick and Marty. <sighs> That's another this one that I want to see. I haven't show. seen it yet though. I oh, heard it's you're I, gonna die. no. I've got it's them. All you're gonna watch. Yeah, I've got them, and I'm I'm gonna mow them down. I've I've heard you know it's like it has, like yeah, it's a cartoon, but it has depth oh no and it has oh, no. meaning it's, it's you know a, it's not a cartoon at all Here, it's think. like yeah oh hold on my legs <laughs> okay oh these these creaky bones <laughs> oh, um, come on <laughs> these old creaky bones i love um, that creator community i mean dan Harmon is brilliant Harman's incredible He's so subversive <laughs> incredible he's so smart you wait till you watch the show um, but as it. far as like i know i know what they're asking is probably more like uh, probably for more of a classic thing. Um, I think Firefly is probably the greatest uh, sci-fi show to have that few episodes and to go as deep as it was able to go. Um, I think that show's probably one of the greatest TV shows ever made. 14, 15 episodes and remarkably consistent through that whole oh. thing. Oh, yeah. out the gate. Out the gate. It's just brilliance. Out the, yeah. Right out of the gate. Uh, yeah, I'd say that, but I'm also uh, a very diehard uh, TNG fan, so uh, I will say that TNG might be the best. And I'm a Star Wars head, uh, but yeah, as far as shows, uh, Firefly and TNG are probably my go tos. Yeah, uh, Teresa McAllister, uh, do you think Ford's alive? Well, someone handed me a book of the continuing series and said that I came back out okay. of nowhere with a, with a beard. And I was calling myself the wolf now, like I was a lone wolf and, uh, and I was still at it. So I had weaned myself off the uh, enzyme or maybe like on, in that movie limitless, I'd learned how to, <laughs> to synthesize it and control it. <laughs> oh, jeez, sure. You know, or I'd done enough of it that I'm just permanently strong. But uh, yeah, I think, I think Ford's, you know, Ford knew his way around uh, a hive ship. He knew what he was doing. And, and he's That's a true. pretty, pretty elusive and resourceful character. I really thought that they were going to bring him back. I so think good. it was a real misfire to have this character and have so much shit falling on Atlantis at certain times and not have this guy who knows the address, who's always watching from afar, who's, still longing for this to be able to come in and kick ass and leave. Like there's just, it would have been, it just seems like good math, but it, they never did it. That's know? one of the things that I love about um, Martin Garrow inserting you into yeah. search and rescue because yeah. Martin was always openly, you know, at least with, with gate world, you know, when he would talk to us uh, self-critical about where the show could improve. And yeah. he, he was willing to say, you know what? I think that we could have done a better job here, or I think we could have done more here. And I think yeah. that that was a nod to that character, a direct criticism from Ford to Shepard. You never rescued me. You never yeah. came back. You yeah. Know? And we, we don't well, you know, leave Garrett our people behind. 
Gero and, was Gero wrote all of the yeah. Ford stuff that we love. Like all the really good Ford stuff was Gero. And Gero was my really <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah. My really good friend on on set. Him and I were were real because we had both, you know, this was our both of our first really big job. Uh and we had both come from Canada, like mm -hmm. from Toronto to do this job. So yeah, he was uh yeah, he was uh, he was my guy. Yeah, he wrote all the really great Ford stuff. Would uh, you be open to coming back to the the new Stargate series that Brad is uh, is trying to uh, get off the ground with MGM? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, I would love. To... Yeah, if I could play Ford again. Oh my mm. god. Now, oh, destruction. Yeah, <laughs> let me add. It. Oh Hello, my god, Wolf. with the with the actor I am now. Oh, yes. Fuck yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, it would. It would feel like. Uh, yeah, it would feel really good to. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Step back into those shoes. Yeah. Oh, favorite scenes. That was another one of my favorite scenes. Sorry. No, go ahead. In in uh, rising when uh, when I when I when he when I say it hurts like hell, sir, and then I jump through the gate backwards. <laughs> that and, and that was also ad libbing. All most of that was a lot of that was ad libbing. It established yeah. that he'd been a member of this team. And that he'd already been over there, yeah. Yeah, or at least yeah. off-world at the very least, for sure. Yeah, so. yeah. My friend, yeah, this has been wonderful having you on. Oh, is that it? I've got to the bottom of the list. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's good to... Thank you. No, I love I love when we get to chat. It's also it's so strange for me whenever I get to revisit these um, memories, and every time it's great. It's great. It's great. It's the gift that it keeps really on giving. Is. And I yeah. think that you're. I you know if I had to say, I'd say that there's a chance that you're not done with it. I'd say that there's more for you to do. That uh, yeah, you know, Brad's Brad's really been trying hard, and you know, the sky's the limit with this next one. So if we if he can get it off the ground. Oh man, right now in this market? Oh yeah. I mean it's fine. It's a TV market finally. Like it's a real and it's 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 ready. Oh, I can't I I can't imagine how much fun it would be to make a Stargate now. Yeah, I would love to I would love to be on it, honestly. Yeah. Well, I am glad that you are able to get back to work up there. You know, that um I've been working steady, yeah. I'm yeah, lucky. That's great. That's yeah. great. And that, I mean, sleep deprivation is, is, is your, one of your bigger problems right now. That's a good thing in this yeah. context. Yeah. The, yeah. This whole thing has got me really, I mean, all of us, we're all just sort of trying to figure yeah. out, trying to navigate, you know, I think, I think it's been a, a, a wonderful thing for us all in one way that we're all getting to know ourselves deeper on an, on another level throughout all of this, yeah. <clears throat> depending on your mental stability yeah you know? we're having to figure out who we're going who we are and where we're at right now and who we're going to be next and when we get out of this yeah. and everything else it's so important to uh to look back on the parts of us uh and our past and and what we've enjoyed that make us the better people that we are the best versions of ourselves that we are and i think stargate did that a, a in spades for both you and I. So yeah, I think this this talk with you over the last hour has done that for me yet again. Just oh, you know, you. and um, yeah, All right. It, it's it's really special, and I'm so grateful to have been able to be friends with you now for so many years. You have been a. I love you, man. You have been a light. I love you too. Absolutely. You too. Thank um, you for always being really wonderful absolutely and thank you yeah. for being so genuine and just a light so i do my best to exist <laughs> <laughs> while i'm here i'm gonna let you get some rest yeah i'm gonna go to sleep well 8 30 <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to do I, I might now that now that we've done this, I may go through these boxes and see what else i can find yeah see what you got yeah i'll Post let you some know picks. absolutely um, right, brother. To anyone that uh, is still watching, thank you for your time and energy. I love you all. And uh, 
I can't wait to see you again to those uh, who I have seen. And I can't wait to meet you to those I haven't. <laughs> there we go. The conventions will be back. It's just a matter of time. So. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. All right, my boy. All right. Have an absolutely lovely night, my friend. You too, I love you. you I love you too. You take care of yourself. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Mr. Rainbow Sun Franks, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking around and uh, uh, watching the show. I appreciate your time. Before we let you go, if you like what you've seen in this episode, I'd appreciate it if you would click that like button. It really makes a difference with YouTube's algorithm and will definitely help the show grow its audience. Please also do consider sharing this video with a Stargate friend. And if you want to get notified about future episodes, click the subscribe icon. If you plan to watch live, I recommend giving the bell icon a click so you'll be the first to know of any schedule changes, which will probably happen all the time, like it did today. And bear in mind, clips from this live stream will be released over the course of the next several days and weeks on both the Dial the Gate and GateWorld.net YouTube channels. That's all I've got for you. I appreciate, again, you sticking around. Thank you so much to my mod team. You guys, I couldn't do this without you. Summer, Ian, Tracy, Keith, Jeremy. And thanks to my production assistants, uh, Jennifer Kirby and Linda Gategabber Fury. You guys make this show happen. Uh, it means a lot to me to have you all around. And next week, we will have pre-recorded episodes. Carmen Argenziano will be running at 12 o'clock Pacific time. And then at 1 o'clock Pacific time, a, a Carmen's uh, a, it's a pre-recorded interview from 10 years ago that we're going to be showing for the first time. I haven't resurrected him or anything. Um, but in a way, he will be brought back for uh, a little while next week. And then at 1 o'clock Pacific time on Saturday, uh, the 21st, uh, we will be bringing in part two of our ongoing interviews with Mr. Joseph Malazzi. We cover season four of Stargate SG-1. So window of opportunity, the curse. Scorched Earth, all of those. It's a nearly two-hour program, and that's going to be released on Dial the Gate. My name is David Reed. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs>